someone please tell me I'm not the only one out here who has to learn and relearn the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system at least on an annual basis. Is it just me or is it you too? Okay, well then let's all relearn it together. And I like to think of this system a little bit like a gossip chain of a bunch of high school girls who are manipulating a situation to get exactly what they want. Hang with me, let's learn it together. So this renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system is one of the ways, and we have multiple ways, that our body regulates blood pressure. And so when the renal arteries are sensing low flow. And so the kidneys are going, what? You're not giving me enough of what I want. The kidneys are kind of princesses and they like to have just the right amount of perfusion. Too much, they're going to shut down about it. Not enough, they're also going to shut down. But when they sense a low flow, the kidneys are going to release a chemical called renin. And think of renin as like the first bit of gossip. So the kidneys release the renin. The liver, let's say another friend, comes to the scene and goes, oh my gosh, I have some gossip too. Okay, I'm going to limit the vocal fry. But their gossip that they're adding to the rumor mill is angiotensinogen. And the renin converts the angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And then the lungs, that's like another girlfriend in this chain of gossips, comes to the scene and says, I have some juicy tea also. And she spills the tea and adds ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme to that angiotensin 1, which then converts into, it's like a game of telephone, we're changing it a little bit each step, converts it to angiotensin two. And angiotensin is the one that is going to make all of the changes. That's the rumor that's being spread across the high school. And angiotensin two is going to improve our blood pressure or increase our blood pressure in four different ways. Number one, it causes vasoconstriction to shrink the tank and shore up the vasculature. Number two, it gives a message to the hypothalamus to say, hey, tell this person they are thirsty. So they take in more fluids, which then is going to be absorbed in the GI tract and increase our intravascular volume. You. Number three, it, re it stimulates the release of aldosterone from the adrenal glands, so these cute little fluffy clouds that sit on the top of your kidneys. And that uh, aldosterone is going to tell the body to hang on to more salt. And uh, so that, as we know, water always follows salt, which will also increase our intravascular volume. And the final thing that angiotensin is going to do is it's going to stimulate the release of antidiuretic hormone, that's your homemade vasopressin, from your posterior pituitary, which is going to tell your kidneys, hang on to some of that salt and stop squeegeeing out so much fluid out the renal tubules. We want you to hang on to it, which then increases our blood pressure by, again, increasing that intravascular volume. So there you have it, the renin angiotest, oh, I can't even say it, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. How often do you have to learn this?